Are we live? We are live. Okay, welcome to the Hoboken Historical Museum. Come on, come on, come on. All right, hundreds of people are in the audience and we're so happy you're joining us on uh, Sunday afternoon at 4.07. And uh, we have done various programming to complement our current exhibit, The Avenue. And the exhibit is really featuring the history uh, historical and contemporary of Washington Street, and this program complements the exhibit. Uh, the exhibit is up until December 23rd. We are recording this live, and it will be archived on YouTube, and hope you subscribe and check it out. So this is one of various talks, but I think this is will be one of the better ones, and it will be archived. And so today we are featuring, um, and I'm having a little trouble again, and well, I'm doing the right button, but I'm doing something else. It's good we work this out now because, um, there we go. Okay, you gotta push it really hard, that's what it is, and it is the top arrow. So, uh, as you can see, our featured speaker today is Ray Guzman. Uh, I personally have known Ray for since the 1980s. I don't know how long ago that is, but it seems kind of recent actually. And uh, he, I would say he's kind of the guy who does the signs on Washington Street, but many other places also. And one of the games I play as I'm driving down Washington Street and I hit that red light when I really feel I could have gotten through is I do stop. I watch out for the baby carriages and all that. And then I look around and try to figure out which signs Ray didn't do. And those stand out pretty quickly. But there are many that he did do. And I'm going to gather other... Uh, people play this game, I bet you Ray does also. So without further ado, let's introduce Ray Guzman to the podium with a nice welcome. Hello everybody. Nice to see everybody here. I'm happy. It's a good day. It's a happy day. And uh, I've known Bob a long time, and it's been a great experience. And uh, the museum's work has been really fantastic through the years. And I'm really proud to have been a part of this and still be a, a, a part of it. Um, I feel that uh, in Hoboken, all the things that have happened here have happened because of people. All the people and all the years, uh, our history, and Hoboken's history has always been about the fabric of, of Hoboken and, and the, the, uh, the families and the businesses that have been here. Uh, I've been in business, uh, ho officially Hoboken sign, since 1986. Uh, and uh, prior to that, um, I had a studio on First and Adams in the old Mickey Finn building. And behind that building, there was a junkyard. We used to have junkyards in Hoboken. Uh, and... Uh, we had, uh, I had my artwork done in there, my, my uh, studio gallery, and uh, we were painting murals for a living. We were working for uh, uh, projects in the city, and uh, that was uh, in the uh, early 80s, 80, 81. Uh, and I was here since 79. We moved to Hoboken in 79. And so uh, while we, were, we, we, we experienced three recessions, uh, and uh, the first one was in, in the 80s, early 80s. And so we had to change our business. It affected our business greatly. And uh, luckily, I was a graphic artist prior to that. I went to School of Visual Arts uh, and uh, I learned typography. I was always in love with that. And I had a, a mentor who was, I always mention him, my Uncle Frank, Frank Rod. And uh, he's taught me and it's been a, a, a wonderful uh, teacher and, and, and leader in my life and uh, an example, a bright example for me. And uh, I try and spread that around for other artists. Um, so we started uh, Hoboken Sign. I realized we're going to need something to survive. And uh, luckily I had the space and I had a truck and I had a ladder 
and uh, we had um, brushes, and I've been lettering signs not very well uh, since uh, the, the early days from the 70s on. And uh, we started Hoboken Sign with our first uh, ad we put in the Hoboken Reporter. And our first job was, uh, official job was Lady Jane's. Uh, Lady Jane's, we did her work. Uh, I was uh, learning silver leaf, gold leaf uh, gilding. And I said, this would be the perfect project, the perfect place. Uh, in those days, we still had ships coming in. Uh, people would come off the ships, the longshoremen, the workers, and including the sailors um, from Germany. Uh, we, and why I say Germany, because there was this one commander of one of the ships who would come in to one of the restaurants and say, I want a Chetty Heading. It was Cherry Herring is his drink. And he had his naval uniform on and he put his trench coat back and he had a dagger the length of his thigh. It was like, oh, okay, he's definitely a, a, a skipper, a captain. So uh, we uh, filled the void in Hoboken uh, because there hadn't been a sign shop here for 14 years. The last sign shop that was here was LT Devlin on 14th Street. And he had what was a shotgun shop. There were long shops, and then you could put long signs in there. And that's where he worked from. So I was lucky uh, because Hoboken hadn't had a, an, a, 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 an expert sign shop. And so I was miserable sign painter. And, but people needed signs. So uh, I was learning and on the fly and doing all kinds of things. Uh, and I was, uh, because of not having the sign, traditional sign training, uh, I had my fine art training and my graphic design training. So I married that with signage. And that's why the sign work that I have is uh, unique. And uh, I'll show you some examples. We'll cut right to the chase here. Uh, this was one of the first, <clears throat> excuse me, signs we did on Washington Street, Hoboken Gourmet. And the Hoboken Historical Commission didn't exist. It was a minimal operation, if anything. Uh, and uh, I was excited about that because uh, I felt like, wow, that's a great thing to have in a town uh, where we're having a commission that's trying to value and uh, uh, explore and uh, keep some of the traditions from the past and so save some of the, and, and it wasn't like, it, it was people were trying to improve, but when you're dealing in a historic district, it's not always an improvement, but there also wasn't much guidance in those days. So here was uh, one of my favorite clients, Kathy Cathell, Dave and Kathy Cathell, and she ran the first Hoboken Gourmet, and she was importing cheeses from Europe and the United States, and her shop was a wonderful shop. I built that uh, facade there in my shop. Uh, I'm not a contractor, but uh, I was uh, handy enough. And I used a uh, lettering in, in the style of, uh, uh, of um, what's a French uh, uh, Art Nouveau. And I tried to keep it simple. And it was a big success. It was a big success for her and, and uh, for me and the, and the Historic Commission. And I, I built that. Now, today, you can't put a facade like that on there because now it's not accurate. It doesn't work so well. So the, the, the new challenge is to, there's always a challenge to create something that's going to work within the, the, the confines of uh, the historic environment. This is Brian Battaglia. I think people remember him. Uh, he had his first shop there, and I was very excited about their business. Uh, I love to cook. I've been a cook all my life. And uh, when Brian's shop came to, to light, you know, he, he and his wife, Elise, uh, gave me the opportunity to design something unique and build something unique. So this is a sign that uh, has gold leaf. We've introduced gold leaf to the historic district. Uh, in the early days, there wasn't much gold leafing being done. Uh, if anything, there was LT Devlin did some gilding on glass, uh, but no one was doing any gilding anymore. So uh, we were very happy to be able to, to do work like this. There's detail. And <clears throat> started to use these uh, different shapes, and uh, Brian used them on packages and, and, and wrappers and that sort of thing. 
Uh, I, I picked this photograph because this is the first glue chip sign uh, that we introduced into Hoboken. And I learned this from a friend of mine in Boise, Idaho. Uh, and it was uh, where you pour animal skin glue on glass makeup. I'm not going to go through all the details, but it's animal skin glue. And uh, you dry, it's dried in a, in a cabinet with a fan. And as it dries, it plinks the glass off. And then you wash it off, and that's how you gild it. So I've always, I used to see this technique at the Bronx Zoo. They had the popcorn stands. And they had the popcorn stands with glass cabinets. And they were all silver. And that's, that was the technique. But nobody knew what that was at the time. So uh, I belong to a group called Letterheads. And uh, Letterheads is a, a wonderful group um, that started probably now 50 years ago in uh, Colorado. And it'd be a group of sign enthusiasts. <clears throat> and what they did is meet every Friday at somebody's shop and learn a technique learn how to letter, learn how to pinstripe, learn how to go leaf, learn something, carve a sign or whatever. It's grown now to an international organization. And uh, the only, all you need to do to, to belong is show up to one of the events. And we have letterheads all over the country, all over the world. Uh, it's a great, great experience. Uh, I just chose this picture to show, <clears throat> again, this is in the historic district. Everything is in the historic dis district that I'm showing. It's kind of um, hard for me to limit just to the historic district because we've done signs all over New Jersey and New York. Uh, and as sometimes as, as, as unique and as creative as this. But the historic district is open to things of this sort. <clears throat> if it's done with the sensibility to colors and materials. And here I used um, uh, platinum leaf, and I used platinum leaf on, on uh, p uh, acrylic laser cut letters. Why platinum? Because platinum is a pure metal and it doesn't um, oxidize like aluminum. So it can use aluminum outdoors or, or silver leaf, something like that. The historic district runs from Observer Highway to 5th, 5th, 14th Street, and it's all of Washington Street. Parts of River Road, uh, parts of uh, Hudson Place are all in the historic district now, uh, which I think is great because there, there's history all over and there's some unique properties there. Uh, and I think they're doing a great job on, on pulling it all in, pulling it together. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that's, that's where it goes. <clears throat> this project here, um, family foot and ankle care. So here's a, a, a kind of a contemporary twist on a carved sign. This is a redwood sign. I used to actually assemble these in my shop. We would get redwood from uh, out west. It would be imported. Uh, and we would glue them up in our shop and then hand carve. I, I have all my carving tools and hand carve uh, all the lettering and then prime it, gild it, and then put a nice kind of a sponge effect on the background of the lettering. And because it's a light color and the gold, they're kind of the same values. So I added a dark outline to the lettering. Also, I knew the doctors and I've always admired doctor training, medical training. And <clears throat> that's why I chose to do the, the illustrations on either side because I studied anatomy at School of Visual Arts. I loved anatomy, I loved drawing and painting figures and portraits. And I understand the skeleton. And I said to these guys, let's do something like this, a, a, a medical illustration, but it would be like a work of fine art. And so that's what we have here. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have an allergy and it's uh, affecting me right now. East LA, uh, that was, uh, a restaurant here in Hoboken by Dave Roberts. He owned it, uh, and uh, he was our former mayor also. Uh, he's a very interesting person. He's owned lots of different businesses. He's very creative, and he allowed me to do something quite unique here. Uh, rather than do this on glass and gild it in, in gold leaf and silver leaf, 
uh, and hand painting it and, and glue chipping, we realized it's going to be a fortune. Uh, <clears throat> and we want it to be the competitive, make this uh, affordable and make it look great. Um, so I came up with doing it in vinyl and vinyl, gold vinyl and marbling, hand painting it and uh, frosted uh, films and uh, also chose the facade coloring uh, and um, and the element, uh, the artistic piece on the lower right. Uh, we won an award for this from the International Sign Competition. Uh, and I'll show you a detail shot here. This is a, a sample piece that I did of the letter of, of what it looks like. And uh, Dave was uh, uh, very pleased. And as I said, it was uh, very easy to work with him. And it was nice to have the space to be able to create something as unique as this. There's a close up and that gold in the background is supposed to simulate the glue chipping and uh, the uh, silver leaf on the front, that's vinyl too. This is all done in reverse. I hand painted the cactus and the elements in there. Uh, this is uh, Elba's Paradise on Washington Street. Um, this is also my French period, right? Um, we were doing this as an Art Nouveau, uh, hand lettered and uh, it turned out to be another beautiful piece and I marbled the framework around it. So I try and play with different materials, different elements uh, and make it stand out. Uh, my job uh, in the historic district, besides presenting the sign work now, we try and, and come up with the coloring of the facade, uh, the uh, sometimes even the cement work to ask us, uh, you know, what's gonna happen with the cement work. Uh, they're very detailed today. And so we try and be as prepared as possible for to answer all the questions that we can, including the lighting. We'll go with that uh, a little later. La Isla Restaurant, this was one of the first blade signs. Hoboken did not allow blade signs. Blade signs are double-faced signs that are hanging with a structure. Uh, they, were, they weren't allowed forever. Uh, and then I don't know what, what the reason was, but I kept pushing and saying, you know, it, it's, it's also affordable and it, it, it works on both sides of the street. And, you know, sometimes you don't need to cover the facade of a building. You can just put a structure out there and, and put a sign. So uh, my client here, <clears throat> Annabelle Luis, was uh, one of those people who was a big champion and a fan of my work. And uh, her and Armando uh, said, you know, let's do something here. Uh, but for me, this had to make sure that it was going to last outdoors because people would do blade signs in plywood. Plywood has fibers, it's, it's compressed, and then the edges aren't sealed. So I learned about MDO, medium density overlay, which is an exterior plywood. So whenever anybody tore down a facade, I said, instead of using plywood, use MDO. It costs more, but there's low maintenance. It looks great when you finish, finish it off and it lasts a very long time. So the key is low maintenance, because everything is maintenance. You have to maintain everything. Uh, signs, glass, facades, paint uh, fronts. Uh, and so this, this piece is one of those pieces where we made it out of MDO, sealed the edges, uh, and uh, epoxied the edges. And that sign has been up for, uh, I haven't been counting the years anymore. Uh, it's just been a long time. Maxwell's, that's what Maxwell's used to be uh, when, when uh, Todd and, uh, uh, and his partner hired me to do the facade to do their sign. And I said, Maxwell's is a very unique experience and I have to celebrate that. And so I said to them, let me go free on this thing. And they said, that's why we call these, just come up with something. Uh, so I came up with this. This um, framework, uh, I mean, it's very unique and, and it looks mosaic. And I, I prepared the edges on this thing uh, and the face of the letters to look realistic, like a real mosaic. The reason why I pulled it off so well is because I also did mosaics. I, I practiced, I, uh, we used to import mosaics from the actual glass pieces from, from Venice. And it used to be next to Dyke's Lumber on the other side was Zanin's. And Zanin, Mr. Zanin, used to have a goatee, and his son and he 
would import, they imported all the glasses from Venice. That's where I got my glass when I did All Saints Episcopal Church, the interior, that was, there's a mosaic in there. And I got all my gold leaf from them and the other glass from them. So I learned, I knew how to pull the saw so it looks like a real gold leaf. I mean, excuse me, uh, mosaic. The, uh, let's see, we have a detail here. Yeah, there you can see a detail. I used gold leaf on the edges. I painted it to look like a true mosaic. Uh, and I chipped uh, with my chisels uh, the material. The material, I made this whole thing out of high density urethane. High density urethane is a, a foam that is used in F, well, now probably uh, at the time F 14 fighter jets. It was embedded in the wings because it was fireproof. It's hard to, you couldn't break it, you couldn't snap it. And now in the sign, sign business and in sign industry, it's uh, you prime it, you can carve it, you can prime it, paint it, and, and it lasts. It doesn't warp. And that's part of the material uh, search for me to make sure that things were going to last outdoors because I always say, I don't want to come back and repair anything. Uh, it's not good for business and it's not good if a letter falls off, you know, it's, it's, it's not good. We want to make sure it's not going to fall off. So, of course, it's a little bit more of a premium, but in the long run, you're better off. So we haven't had an issue. So I hand routed the edges on that. And I love sculpting, so I sculpted the cup, and it's two, three inches thick. So the, the key was to, uh, the, the fun part was to make it look three-dimensional and put the dancers on there. And, of course, uh, um, Todd and his partner um, loved it, and it went up. And I think it was a, a good, a very good solution and a, and a good brand image for Maxwell's. I brought Singleton Gallman. Today there's a new sign there, which I did also. But I brought this in here to show uh, part of the, the, the treatment to the framework or the sensibility to the cornice. So uh, the, the business next door also had a sign that was similar and the framework here is kind of matching. Uh, and, and I didn't want to copy. We just wanted to give a, a framework, a, 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 a reference and a flavor to what was existing there. Surf and turf. Uh, a reason why I got this in here is because you would never believe that this would be approved in the historic district at that time. Uh, but we got the approval for this, and it was my friend, wonderful friend, Wally Ortiz, who used to run Red Rooster Construction. He and his wife opened up Surf and Turf. It was a skate shop. It was, um, uh, it was swimming gear. He had everything, and, and Wally was also a, a real big sports enthusiast. He was buff, he was built, and he followed his dream of, of making sure to stay physically fit. And he did all kinds of physical activity. He went to skiing in uh, Colorado, uh, and he's, he's done all kinds of great things. He's no longer with us, unfortunately, uh, but he was a beautiful person, and he also let me create something for his surf and turf. Uh, I love doing this. It was uh, a treatment of letters. This is all hand painted. Uh, and the only piece of vinyl was the surf and the turf. And uh, this was before printing. And I mean, what I mean by that is large scale printing. Most all sign companies today call themselves sign companies. And all they really do is have a machine, a large scale printer, which we have one too. And you can print these things uh, off the machines and then put them on a signage. But this is hand lettering uh, and hand painted. I'm sorry, hand painted and the lettering is vinyl. There's the. This is what it looked like on the on the table. I brought the artwork here. It's uh, you can see the sketch later on. Uh, and uh, there's the turf, and I added the runner in later on. And that was that was a fun fun project to do. Uh, this was a, a great project um, we had another and, and i talked about the fabric of hoboken it's all about people it's the people that make what hoboken is and we bring all our history all our experiences all our families together and you have interesting fascinating people and, and this the woman who owned this um pat Tui, people may remember her um she was another one of those women who knew what she wanted she was very smart uh, and also um, a business owner, 
and I loved working with challenging people. She was, she challenged me, she pushed me, and she said, this is the wording, it's called Widow McShea Public House, do something. That's what I came up with, and she loved this sign. This sign is all hand-lettered completely, hand-painted. I used their brush for the fading of the lettering. I tried to bring in an, uh, a turn-of-the-century look, um, and um, you use the scroll work. There's gold leaf on there, and the centerpiece is a piece of redwood, actually several pieces of redwood that I lapped and joined together, uh, plane them, and then we use the router around the edge for the framework, and I stippled that, and then I had the, the background of the figures sandblasted, so I had to take that to somebody else to do that, and then painted and primed, and again, the materials had to be that they last outdoors, and then I actually hand-painted that portrait of her, so because of my fine art experience, I'm able to pull off a portrait like that, and it was a, a beautiful portrait. Uh, that won first place in the International Science, Sign of the Times competition. When we won that competition, it put us on the sign map. Uh, everybody all over the country, I was getting calls from sign companies all over. And I have to tell you, again, I was trying to emulate letterheads. as Mark Otis and Noel, uh, um, I forgot his name. I was going to say Noel Coward, Noel Howard. <laughs> Huh? No Weber, thank you. That's a beautiful person. I forgot his name. Uh, and uh, these guys were winners of those competitions, and I would um, try to make myself follow follow their their lead and push the elements and the materials that I could pull together and pull something off like this. So that that really did a, a great job for us. Bloomfield and uh, Garden Exchange. This was uh, a building that was behind City Hall. Uh, and that building, uh, that's part of a uh, building you were at, right across the street from your apartment. Um, that building had uh, part purview from the Historic Commission too. They didn't quite, at that time, have quite the purview, the, the, the review for that building, but Claire Bookdamas, who owned that building, uh, wanted it to be more in keeping with the flavor and the historic effect and feel of, of what was going on in Hoboken on Washington Street at the time. Uh, later on, Pat Tui also owned that building. So these are women who were uh, very smart and knew the, what was coming and what was happening in Hoboken and what the future held, and they wanted to be a part of that in their buildings and in their businesses. So this was uh, one, of the, one of the signs that I created for uh, Claire. And uh, that background, this was before I knew about glue chipping. So I used a simulation, a simulated piece in the background, and that got approved by the Historic Commission. And that's all done on glass in reverse. It's all hand painted backwards. So that's part of the fun too, part of the challenge. Uh, I put All Saints Episcopal Day School here. Uh, it was a great project, and another wonderful woman to work with at the time, uh, Jill Singleton. This is a person who had vision and uh, put together a, a, a most wonderful school experience, a business. We knew her when she was just pull, pulling together this uh, vision of hers for this school. Uh, through the years, we've done all kinds of work uh, for the school and for Jill Singleton. And I put this here because we also did the ironwork on here uh, and the installation. This was an engineering feat, uh, but it was a challenge and a challenge that I love to do and work with other, other craftsmen, other guys who are, and women who uh, have the skills and we can put our brains together and come up with a solution. And that's what we came up with uh, for this. Up, down, there we go. Uh, Bayonne Community Bank. This is today. This is what we're doing. Um, this is uh, steel letters uh, and uh, two inch thick acrylics uh, for their logo. And the lighting, that's part of the lighting that I come up with now for projects. Instead of just goosenecks, uh, we're trying to find other lighting systems that are uh, elegant, 
uh, and uh, will we'll last outdoors, uh, will live and uh, not fall apart. Because part of what happens with the goosenecks, you can take a shortcut and kind of bend conduit to do, to do the shape. But what happens is when it's connected to the fixture and you have a storm, it snaps and no one's going to come back and fix one lamp. So my deal is to be able to put something together where the lighting works. This lighting fixture, you can adjust it so that it, it becomes a, a flood and also a spot. And it's, it's a great product. And so now we're also coming up with different shapes. So the manufacturers of these lamps now are, are very aggressive and they're, it's, it's really great. It's, it's wonderful to have these experiences and be able to put together a signage that's complete. So the coloring, the facade, the glasswork, the uh, lettering, the lamps. Yeah, and then I, on this project, I work with Nastasi. I love mm -hmm. Nastasi Architects. Uh, I think John is a, 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 a beautiful talent, and he's got tremendous future. And uh, we're going to hear more of, of Nastasi in the future uh, with the, as one of the, the leading architects. Uh, and he's got a great team, great group of people working with him. And I'm proud to be a part of that. This is a great project, another one of those great, another woman and, a, and her son, uh, Mary Velastro, uh, wonderful woman, Buddy's mother. Uh, I get a call one day and uh, it's Buddy. And he says, what's that thing you guys do? I said, branding? He goes, yeah, that. He said, I, I, we, we're gonna change everything. We need a new look, we need a new sign, we need everything new. I said, what's going on, Buddy? He said, uh, well, you know, I got an opportunity to be take an audition with one of the shows, one of the cake shows or cooking shows. And he had to do an audition. And I said, well, that's great. I said, you're, you have the face. He said, no, it's more than that. I have to sell to the, directly to the sponsors and have them fun. I said, whoa, that's, that's a different audition. So, but he said, just come up with something. The, this st storefront, Bake shop from the bottom of the sign down. That was already done probably um, in the in the mid '80s, but the top had the old Shoenigs Bakery uh, grill work up on top, aluminum and plastic letters. So Mary said, "Get rid of all that and do one of your historic things." I said, "Mary, I'm not an architect." She goes, "You know what I want." I said, oh, okay, so this is what I came up with. I came up with the, this, Carlos Bake Shop, so everything that you see on TV, that's all of our work. Uh, and uh, we, we did Buddy's uh, logo, uh, and the, the cakes on both sides there uh, are photographs I took when Buddy used to work upstairs from the bakery, and he had these cakes that he was making, and we photographed them, and, and I digitized, I created them on a Wacom tablet, and printed them where they're on the printing machine, right? The big sign printing machines. Uh, but we're using uh, UV lamination and making sure that it's not going to fade. Um, unfortunately, this was done many years ago now. So they're, they're just beginning to show some, some age now. But uh, this sign uh, was a great project. And so I created the facade from the bottom, from the bottom of the sign to the top. And... Uh, Mary, we meet in front of the building with the contractors who were great builders also, mobile construction. And the brothers were there and they say, Mary, he's got no, no drawings here. And I said, see, Mary, that's what I said. And she says, you know what? I don't want to hear this. You know what you got to do. You know what you got to do. Get together and make it happen. That's Mary, right? So that's what we did. That's why you, you see what you see there. So that was also a fun example uh, of, of being able to, to work and, and create something that is in our imagination and other people's imaginations. Mary and Buddy. This is a project we did for uh, Eugene. When he bought the, uh, the Elysian, um, we uh, said, let's approach this. Let's not just put a sign. We don't want to cover the, the, any of the cornice up there. We don't want to cover the glass. So I'm thinking, you know, everybody, 
when you go in front of the historic, these are things that are very important and you're not going to slap a sign over it. Um, so uh, I said, you know, let's, let's do something unique here. Uh, we'll use porcelain. And my friend, Noel Weber, uh, I call him, I said, no, can we bend steel and create this piece and have you guys bake it? He goes, no problem. So I took the sizes, we went on site, took the curves, all the measurements, and uh, I designed this piece and I sent it to, to Noel. And a couple of weeks later, actually a couple of months later, came back and that's the piece, it's actual porcelain, it's baked, it's beautiful. And the installation uh, was very tricky because we had to tap screw the, the iron, the cast iron column. So you can't just stick a screw in there. You have to be able to drill through that and, and, and do the, your, your uh, tacking with the screws in there to make sure that's never going to come down. It'll last for hundreds of years if it has to because it's porcelain. It's steel, bent steel, rolled steel. So that's a unique approach to for, for a lesion, and, and uh, the historic really, really enjoyed that. And here's something totally different. Uh, hair cult, another dynamic woman in Hoboken, Lori, a uh, great business person and a great vision for her business. And again, I love working with people like that because uh, it challenges me, they push me, and uh, this is what, what uh, we work with. And Believe it or not, this piece was approved by the historic because of the materials, the layout, the coloring, and they also know Lori's business. She runs a, a wonderful operation there. It's been there for years, and she has a tremendous clientele. This is high-density urethane with uh, 23 carat gold leaf gilding and uh, gold lettering. Uh, and the scorpion in the middle is a, a PVC piece, exterior grade PVC, uh, and uh, uh, also gilded. Sparrow Wine and Liquor. Now this is a, a great piece. Uh, this is Armando Luis who uh, owns this business. He's done a great job uh, in, in running his, his, his businesses and he's always been my, my model uh, when I think about uh, running a business to try and work as close as possible to the way Armando thinks and, and works about his materials. When he created this facade, and I don't remember the years, I think it was the early, mid 80s, or late 80s, uh, nothing had like this has ever been done in Hoboken. There was no facades, nobody was doing anything. But Armando saw, this used to be sparrows that had the black plastic front. And he used to sell beer and, and cigars in there, and cigarettes and lottery. But Armando saw the future. He saw wine was going to be, and it's also his love. He's a real connoisseur and, and a real entrepreneur. Uh, and he saw this vision and he said, this is what it's going to be from now on. We're not going to be running that type of operation anymore. It's going to be something wonderful. So I... He came to me and he said, uh, put a sign together. And, and I said, this is a huge facade. This is a long space and it's gonna be a challenge. So I put together a drawing. I brought the, the drawing here. You could see it. it's speed up now. And I assembled this out of redwood. And uh, these were all planks. They're, they're two inches thick and they were six inches wide. And we had to order all, all this uh, redwood and lap them all together and join them with the aluminum. We drilled through them and join them with aluminum rods. Uh, and Joe, do you remember Joe, the, con the construction guy, contract? Who? Joe Dunning. Joe Dunning, that's right. Thank you. He is another great craftsman. Joe Dunning, he built this thing for me. We sat there for a couple of hours going over how we're going to do this. And he says, that's what I'm going to do. I said, I know, you know, we could put aluminum through there. He says, I could do that. I said, you're sure? He said, absolutely. So he built this thing and uh, he brings it over to my shop. And I had a long shop. It was on First and Adams. And it was spectacular. All of a sudden, it's almost as long as this map here. 
And by the way, the uh, photographs up here from McKevin, I have to give him a shout out. It's a beautiful um, presentation of Washington Street. And so uh, back to the, to the sign here, it comes into my shop. I have all my carving tools out. I make the pattern. I start carving this thing. So I'm at work. I'm working this thing, carving it all out, priming it, gilding it, painting it. And it was a great, it was a project of love. Just love doing this thing. And uh, now we're taking it out of the shop and we realize how we're going to get it up to Washington Street. So Wally, Walter Ortiz, Red Rooster Construction, he shows up with his boys. And, and he, he does, he did at the time, great construction work all over Hoboken. He built many buildings, many projects. And Wally says, no problem, let's go. He shows up with 20 guys and we have dollies. There must have been six dollies there. We bring the sign up, sit on the dollies, and we're taking it up First Street. Police car pulls up and he says, where are you going with this? We go Washington Street. He goes, follow me. Woo, woo, woo. It's blocking the traffic and it's, we're creating havoc and it was a great day. We're just going up First Street all the way, turn the corner. Everybody's looking at this big sign coming in. It was a happening. It was a great happening. We bring it up and Armando's proud. Everybody in the street is out there and Wally and his crew hoist it up and they install the thing. And it was a, that was a, a great day and a, a great, great, uh, great experience. Actually, um, probably about 10 years ago, we restored it again. Uh, the first time, actually, because I used paints that were high quality paints and uh, great quality primers, and it was redwood. Redwood does not rot and doesn't have hollows and doesn't have um, access. We sealed everything to make sure there's no access for water. And so I took it down, belt sanded the whole thing and started from scratch, repainted it and regilded it and put it back up. So that sign can last another 30 years, you know. Uh, that facade, Armando and his crew, they have to scrape that down every four or five years because it's oak. It's pure oak outside. And then they, they prime that, uh, excuse me, uh, they use uh, uh, their urethane primers, uh, co coatings out there. Uh, and it's a, it's a maintenance job, but it's a beautiful piece. And uh, it, it's part of his brand. It's part of what makes it, makes it work for, for, uh, for wine and liquor. Uh, for Sparrow and for Hoboken. This restaurant we all know is right next door to uh, down the street from uh, Armando. This is Annabelle's also. Uh, his wife runs uh, the uh, La Isla downtown. And we wanted to be able to produce a sign here that reflected old Cuban cars, the age and wear and tear in Cuba now, not something new and fresh. Uh, we wanted it to look uh, a period piece, like from the 60s, the lettering style of 60s, and the coloring is also from the 60s. And uh, the wear and tear was part of my forte. I love creating things that look like they've been destroyed and have wear and tear, but it's all made with fine materials, fine paints, and, uh, and it looks just like the way depicted it. It looks like something that needs to be restored. So Armando and Annabelle love telling me, you, know, you can't imagine how many guys come and say, I could restore that sign for you. <laughs> Stan Sports Center. Uh, what I loved about this project is I was able to do something contemporary and uh, something Hoboken-y. Uh, Stan has been a, a, a fixture in Hoboken, a, a traditional piece of, for a Hoboken high school through all the years and all the teams. Everybody knows Stan Sporting Goods. And those guys, they work hard. They get you everything. They get the, the best of what they can get for your teams. Uh, and if you love uh, your professional Major League Baseball, hockey, sports, whatever, they'll get you products that are um, le legitimate. Uh, what I loved about this uh, also is uh, I'm a big baseball fan, and so the bottom part, Sports Center, reflects a, a baseball feeling. 
with the with the stripes and the the fading uh, the lettering style. Uh, the letters are I handcrafted those out of high density urethane, and uh, there used to be in the sign business all the lettering paint was lead lead based. That's why it lasted so long, uh, and it looks so beautiful and delicious. You don't want to eat it, but it's delicious for the eyes. Uh, now we have material that's not, and so it has to be repainted, restored every few years uh, because the material, the paint doesn't last. So we try and, and use automotive paints. So we'll send projects out like Lori's hair cult sign. That was all painted with automotive paint. So that, as I said, we don't want to come back and touch up anything, and it's going to last like a car, except it's not going to get the abuse a real car gets because it's permanently up on the building. Does that go backwards? That's not the end. And that is the end of the show. Yes. So I would like to open this period up to uh, questions and answer period. Uh, hey, Jean Paul. Hi, the cake boss. Yes. From the time he gave you the call to the time the sign was put up in final touches, how long? I was probably, I'd say it's about five weeks, you know, maybe close to two, two months, because we had to create the logo and we had many iterations of the logo before he decided, yes, that's, that's the way to go. And when I made the presentation to him, they happened to be filming. Uh, they were filming there every day uh, after a while. So I got there one day with the portfolio and I'm ready to show Buddy the drawings. And the camera crew came over and said, let's, let's take him to and let's put the, you know, on, on the, the logos on here. And I said, no, because he hasn't decided, you know, which one. And Buddy said, yeah, he's right. Let's, no, 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 don't shoot this. But yeah, it was about two months. Uh, and it was, it was exciting. It was fun to be there. I have a question from YouTube. Eric Cameron, one of our, our stalwart attendees for our live streams, he, he says, you mentioned platinum and silver paint. What's the most expensive paint and how long do they last? Uh, what I meant is platinum leaf. And uh, silver paint, like gold paint, um, the paint technology has changed uh, today. It's better than it was, but it's still bronzing agents. It's still powdery. You still have to have a, a carrier or a sealer on the bronze and the gold to make it stand longer. So today it could it could exp, it could be exposed for a good five seven years, pushing it at ten. Uh, but it's uh, you, you're better off. That's why we use platinum leaf. If we're going to do something outdoors, uh, yes, you're paying for for platinum leaf. Platinum is expensive. Uh, and it's like gold leaf. So gold leaf, we're averaging for a, a book of, of, of gold. And, and, and right now, with our economy, the way it's going, and materials and, and supplies uh, rising in price, it's still we're paying four, three to four hundred dollars for a, a book of gold. That's only 25 sheets. So we're going through maybe, depending on the project, it could be, you know, five books. <laughs> So, and platinum, platinum is even more expensive. Hi, everybody. Uh, Ray, I'm familiar with your two beautiful paintings, the one by the um, authors, authors and Third Street. It's the window painting. Oh, yes. Kind of like a still the life. Murals, yes. And also your kind of aerial shot of, Willow and Observer Highway, that building. Mm -hmm. Now, did you do those prior to starting your business? And what would what would you charge like in the day for say that author uh, still life painting on the on the window? Do you remember what they you charged them? No, I don't remember what. But you know, and and again, the costs. Uh, let's put it this way: at the time, I was happy that I made it, the money. That I, I won't say any, any that it was nothing. But because it was Claire Brick Damas, it was fair and it was great. And she gave me the opportunity. And she just loved pushing me to. I did also paintings upstairs in her uh, roof deck garden. Uh, there's a mural up. There was a mural up there that she allowed me to take the wall and do something to it. 
Uh, the One Observer Highway, that was a grant I got from the New Jersey State Art Council. They had chosen 11 artists in Hoboken uh, to do, half of them were sculptors and half of them were painters. And in, at that time, that was 1981, uh, my son was uh, not even born yet. <laughs> By the way, he's here too. That's right. Hello, son. Noah in the back. That's Noah. And uh, I went out there, uh, and it was a very interesting project because the state said, the New Jersey State Council said, find your buildings and we'll, we'll support you with, with the grant and you paint your paintings and build your sculptures. So it turned out that nobody wanted any paintings on their buildings and nobody wanted any sculptures on their properties. That was in the 80s. And I think it's still something like that is still going on today. Uh, though it's changing uh, slowly. Uh, that's another story. That's another event we'll do here. Uh, and uh, the reason why I got my mural done, because I said, you know what? I'm going to choose a city building. And I still, that was, so that was the Observer Highway building. And I still had to deal with a few pe people. Steve Cappiello said to me, you know, go talk to the director of that building. And if you get it, you know, I'm behind it. So I did. Uh, and I had a talk with him, and uh, I got the project. I painted that in the snow in two days. So that was, and it's a, it was a fun, another fun project. Um, so I'm familiar with a lot of the signs that you presented, uh, but I really liked you, how you just, you really credited a lot of the store owners, that it's kind oh. of a partnership, and you really respected their vision, and it's a collaboration, which I never really thought about. Yeah, that's a good point, and thanks for bringing that up, because that the store owners were the ones who challenged me, and because I was going to approach it not like a sign guy, I was going to approach it like Ray, the artist who's likes to do signs and so they were part of that why we got such unique work because they were all uniquely different and they all had unique businesses and, and and it's very interesting that now at this point in my life most of my friends are all the business owners <laughs> so you know when you're self-employed that's what happens you know they, they become your your extended family and that's that's a great that's a great gift and I guess also kind of sad that a many many of these businesses have, you know, the owner may have passed or, you know, the, the business wasn't able to adapt to the times or whatever. Right. And in a funny way, your signs are probably sitting different places and are, the signs are so well made, they're outliving the businesses. <laughs> That's right. I, actually, <clears throat> some of the people have called me and said, your sign, it's in my living room. Oh, your sign is in our yard. Your sign... Uh, I think Maxwell's is in somebody's yard. Um, yeah. Uh, and the Hoboken House, when we did the Hoboken House restaurant, which is now going under major uh, reconstruction over there now, a new owner, uh, another exciting, uh, interesting uh, owner, Dave JC. Uh, he's given me good opportunity. I've done a lot of projects for him through the years. Another person with vision, he had his own ideas and, and, and ways of operating. And now he's taken over what used to be Hoboken House Restaurant. Uh, it's going to be great to see what, what's going to evolve out of that. Uh, but uh, the Bugdamas family has that sign in there. And in, in, uh, uh, Dino's family has that sign in their house. Right. We, uh, over the years, we occasionally get phone calls uh, about, do you want the Ray Guzman sign, you know, from <laughs> such and such <laughs> business? And uh, not that it was Washington Street, but I think I told you we recently, Lauren De Silva just donated the little cricket oh, antique yes. sign, which is really well made. <clears throat> yes, uh, it is. All hand painted. Right. And then another... <clears throat> I just, you know, I keep going back to the women because uh, now, now it's fashionable. Right? Everybody talks to, oh, the women, this. They were always there. They were always there. And a lot of the contractors said, oh, I can't deal with her because she's this. I said, guys, you're missing this. This is a great opportunity. These people are people. They have great businesses. They have great ideas. They're, you know, and I, I, I just love getting involved with, with everybody. And, uh, yeah, and Lauren was one of those who had a unique shop. She was very stylish. She's still very stylish today. 
uh, and uh, she gave me the opportunity to create something very uh, adorable, and uh, and I loved doing that project. That was a, a great, great challenge. Got a question from David A. Smith, Reverse Glass Gilding Courses on YouTube. Oh. And he says, great seeing you and oh viewing this all the way from England. That's right. That's Dave <laughs> Smith. He's, he, okay. Hey, Dave. <laughs> He says, are you experiencing an upsurge of family-run businesses wanting more handcrafted work over the digital work? That's very interesting, Dave. You know, uh, living in Hoboken, um, I'd have to say that we had a period there when that wasn't happening. Uh, but now we're just beginning to, we had a group that came from uh, Ireland, right? These, uh, this is business on First Street. And what did they want, David? You know this. They wanted a letter writer. A letter writer to us Americans is a, is a hand-painted sign, right? You, that you can hand-letter your sign. In Europe, it's called letter writers. Uh, and uh, they loved that. They came to my shop, and they saw the letter writing, and they said, that's it. That's what we want. And every time they would ask me to do something there, they would say, Ray, don't you ever say no to anything? <laughs> I said, no, you guys are, are great to work with. They were interesting and a great experience. Their business, Dear Maud on First Street. So now we're gonna be gilding their, their, uh, their front, uh, the window up there. And I'm so happy uh, that David is watching this because Dave is a beautiful, beautiful person talking about gold leaf work around the world. He's the master. Uh, and uh, what, how we met Dave, when we won that sign contest with a McShane, uh, I get a call on my phone at the studio and it's this voice, a British voice. And he says, I'd like to get a moment to talk with you about the Wilder McShay. And I was so excited. Turned out he wanted to use the basic design for a project in Torquay, which is where he lives. And I said, you called me from England to compliment me and you want to use that idea? I said, what a beautiful thing. Absolutely, go to it. So since then, we've been to England. We stayed with, with Dave and his lovely wife and his daughters. Uh, we've been to his shop. Uh, and uh, he's one of those letterheads that we're, I was talking about that's around the world. Uh, and the, the work he's doing, he's also, I don't know what the, the term, I forgot the official term, but he's going to be, or he was already, uh, appointed by the Queen as, uh, uh, by Her Majesty as his shop, his work as a craftsman for gold leaf work in England. So be worthy to look him up. I love you, Dave. Any last questions? Uh, you, here's my question. Um, you, you've been uh, a, a very big, if not the biggest player in the whole bulk and sign community um, for decades. And uh, in, in what I do, it, it's the businesses are sort of the sense I get here is what happens in my industry. It's either big business is coming in and, and doing a certain thing or the, the smaller business is becoming more of a boutique kind of appeal. Um, it, it, given your body of work and your impact on Hoboken and, and your just knowledge of what's going on here, can you give us some clue as to your vision of what's going to happen to signage on Washington Street in the next 10 to 20 years? That's an excellent question. And, you know, as you're talking, first off, I have to say, uh, he sits on a historic board, Marty Anderson. He's a gifted craftsman also, uh, does great work. I've respected his work through the years, and he's respected my work and at times defended uh, my work and, and it allowed in the historic board to express certain aspects about my work because of his experience, he's able to make it, bring it to them in a clearer, more workable fashion. And so that's been a great experience. Um, I've thought about that, you know, I was talking to Bob the other day and cause people ask me, Oh God, you're in Hoboken. You must've seen the changes from when we came here in 79. I said, we see the changes every six months. Every six months, there's rapid change in Hoboken. Uh, that will be constant. I think that's going, always going to be a part of our 
experience and that long after we're gone, it's going to continue to keep changing uh, for however way it's going to be. Um, I've seen a lot of businesses that have come in that are dot coms. They're funded by big money. They have big money and they already have their artwork laid out. They have their drawings done. Uh, they can't uh, get their permits unless they go, you know, in the historic, they have to go. We, we, we're experienced with a lot of the, the building department, uh, permitting throughout the state. Uh, but I think the sign, the perspective that I see in the sign business today, most of it is print, uh, printing machines, and they just that, put that on a piece of PVC or a piece of wood. Uh, and I have to say that luckily we have the historic district because it forces people to stop and say, let's think about this in a different way. There's another way to do this instead of just quick and cheap. There's nothing wrong with inexpensiveness. There's something wrong with cheap. Cheap is not the way to go. And I think we're, we're in a place in a world where people are now beginning to appreciate that. Um, I think that all I can do and all you can do is, is do the best work we can do and let the examples of our, the fruits of our labor show. And people who are aware notice that and see that. And as far as it becoming a wave of any kind, I don't know. Uh, and like David's experiencing something in, in England, he's done some beautiful, beautiful work and he's still doing some beautiful work. Uh, lots of, lots of it. And there are others around the country and around the world who are doing wonderful work. Uh, the key is social media, uh, has made everything fast. Uh, and it's not, and it doesn't last. Nothing lasts. It's here. Oh, it's, oh, oh, it's, it's, you know, it's now part of the, the, the norm and, and, uh, uh, it's, it's gone spiral, uh, viral, right? Spiral viral. Uh, and, uh, and it, but it's only for 10 seconds. It's, you know, it's not the be all end all. So, but the work is still here. It's still holding on. So it, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a, of a time for us, but I think that's, it's a time for everybody. Everybody's experiencing something that's, uh, very different and uh hopefully they'll you know good things will will come to will rise to the surface thank you thank you so much thank you <laughs> thank you robert yeah, i appreciate definitely. the opportunity um i'm just going to say kind of with marty's question too just want to jump in and just say washington street is our main street of town the signage is what you see so i believe signage and lighting and tailing tailoring that with what the historic commission is looking for i think there is a healthiness to washington street materials may change uh, if you get more and more corporate businesses like banks and the telephone stores that's going to be a challenge you know i think to the sign maker because they're going to come in with their logos and their materials and uh, probably people they've you know hired that did the verizon store as one example and they do it for every town in the that's united right. states mm -hmm. but if we can somehow encourage the mom and pop stores, uh, especially the mom and pops who own their buildings, they're gonna look for the individual nature. So when you drive down Washington Street, that's gonna capture your attention. Not the banks, not the phone stores, not the corporate stores, more the, the, the mom and pop stores. And I think they know that signage is what the eye sees. That's right. Uh, Keeping the building standing is important, but what you see is the facade, the lighting and, and the signage. And when you drive down Washington Street now, it's pretty exciting, I feel. And uh, a lot of it has to do with your signs, I believe. So uh, you've done an amazing credit to the community. We're glad you chose Hoboken and continue to make Washington Street interesting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Compliment. So this has been a great conversation. I learned a lot. It was really interesting seeing businesses that you kind of forgot.
that like were from the 80s and 90s and there's this incredible sign and that visual memory is in your head, but until you see that sign, it triggers you know, that, that memory. Uh, I think we're just gonna close out with a few more images. And if I get my pointer the right way, and uh, let's see where we are. Uh, why am I having trouble? I think first you have to... There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm back at the beginning. Do, no, keep, going. keep going. Okay. Um, do want to mention that the, uh, the Avenue, A History of Washington Street, which ties into this talk and raised signage, will be up until December 23rd. So please spread the word. Once it comes down, it's down, kind of like some signs. And, uh, but we will be making a digital version, or we have made a digital version of this exhibit, so it will continue on. And more about that at another time. And uh, we do, people know we do the Hoboken Talks, which is a conversation with a Hobokenite uh, every Thursday night. And we have one coming up with uh, Ruben Morales uh, Sr., which will air. And Ray has appeared on that. In fact, this is Ray's third time on a visual program. So that's pretty cool. And we might have another image here. Uh, and uh, upstairs, we have the work of Deborah Paul, uh, still lifes that are pretty amazing. She has a studio in the Newman Leather Building. and. Uh, her exhibit is up until the end of the month, and you have a little more time to see that. Uh, so we hope you visit for that purpose. And that could be it. Is there more? That is it. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you, Raymond Guzman. Thank you. And we'll mention that we have some of Ray's materials uh, from the projects that he submits to the Historic Commission, which is kind of interesting. And we have a, a couple pretty select posters that are for sale. They're $20 each, and they're signed by Ray. And you can take it home with you. You can take some Hoboken signage home with you. Uh, and again, thanks for coming.